Hey there, welcome back to chapter one, section two. Here I'm gonna to talk to you about the domain and range of the parent functions that I went over in the last video. And I'm gonna be answering the same six questions for each function. Does it pass through the origin? Is it restricted in the x-axis? What's the domain in interval notation? What's the domain in inequality notation? Is it restricted anywhere on the y-axis? Uh, what's the range in interval notation? What's the range in inequality notation? And is there a line of symmetry? So looking at number one, passing, does it pass through the origin? That's at zero, zero. Yes, it does. Is it restricted anywhere on the x? Meaning, can it move freely left and right? It is moving freely left and right, so it is not restricted. Question three is, um, what's the domain? So if something's not restricted, then it has a domain of all real numbers. So you're going to write that in the interval notation as negative infinity to positive infinity. And you use parentheses because you can't touch infinity. In inequality notation, you don't write the infinity symbols. So the, what numbers do I write down? Oh, well, I can't write down any numbers you use uh, the all real numbers symbol, which is an R with an extra line going through it. If you were to Google all real numbers symbols, you'll see a bunch of symbols that look similar to that. Um, but yeah, that's what you write down if it's all real numbers and you're staying in inequality form, okay? Um, so you might wanna make a note to yourself that these are two different ways of expressing uh, that you have all real numbers. All right, uh, question four, is the range restricted or is it restricted anywhere in the y-axis? Meaning, can it move up and down freely? Yes, it can, so it is not restricted. The shape of the graph is irrelevant. It just matters if it's able to move up and down if you're talking about the y-axis and uh, side to side if you're talking about the x-axis or the domain. So I'll say not restricted, so I say the same answer for the range. It's also all real numbers, so negative infinity to positive infinity, and then you draw the R with an extra line. And does it have line symmetry? Yes, it does. If you were to draw a line going the exact opposite way, and you were to fold it over that diagonal line, um, then it would be folding onto itself, so it does exhibit line symmetry. What is the equation of that line? Well, what's the equation of this line? f of x equals x. I just did the exact opposite of it. So that's f of x equals negative x. So yes, it has line symmetry at f of x equals negative x. <clears throat> Excuse me, negative x. So that's the all six for linear. For absolute value, does it pass through the origin? Yes, it does. Um, is the domain restricted or is it restricted anywhere in the x-axis? It is moving left freely and right freely, so not restricted. Um, the next thing I'll write down is the domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. And then you write the R with uh, the, the extra line going through it. Is the range restricted? Is it restricted anywhere in the y-axis? You'll notice that it's only moving up. If I plug in a positive number on the x, I get a positive number on the y. If I plug in a negative number on the x, I get a positive number again on the y. So the y can't be negative. So we'll say that can't be negative. And if y can't be negative, then zero is the smallest number it can, it can hit. And so I'll put zero in a bracket to indicate it can pass through zero. And if it's just going up, it's going up towards positive infinity. Um, if I were to express that in inequality notation, you have to use your set builder notation. So you say y, y for range. y is in all real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to zero. You have to say or equal to because we just said it can pass through the origin, so it's passing through zero on the y-axis. Um, so yeah, does it have line symmetry? Yes, it does. I can draw a vertical line through there. Um, so it does exhibit line symmetry at the y-axis. You'll notice the quadratic or the polynomial even function looks very similar. 
Um, it also only goes up, so that means um, it can. It's not restricted on the x. It's moving freely left and right. I did just skip over question one though. Can it pass through the origin? Yes. If you ever get um, stuck, uh, if you plug in zero, you should get zero for y. So if you type in zero squared, you should get zero. Um, but the graph will definitely show you if it can hit through the origin or not. So yes, it can go through the origin. Um, if you plug in zero and get something else, it's not going to go through the origin. Um, so the x's are not restricted negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers, the symbol for that. And then the range, is it restricted on the y-axis? Yes, it is. You can't have any negative numbers. And so I'm going to say 0, because it can go through 0, and then goes up forever. So 0 is in a bracket, infinity is in parentheses, because bracket you can touch, parentheses you can't. And y is in all real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Does it exhibit line symmetry? Yes, it does. I can draw a line down the middle. That's x equals 0. Or you can just say um, it's the y-axis. But if you wanted to write an equation for it, it would be x equals 0. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my cubic or polynomial odd, that clearly passes through the origin. Um, and it is moving left and right freely, so it is not restricted. So that means it has a domain of all real numbers. So I'm talking faster than I can write. All real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, do the R. And the range, is it moving up and down freely? Yes, it is. So the y-axis is not restricted and so um, I say the same thing, negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. Is there line symmetry? No. If you were to draw this line and fold it over, the curves wouldn't match up. So, um, but I feel like it does kind of look like f of x equals negative x would be the, the line symmetry. But if you were to really look at it and fold it over and draw it, um, it, the curves wouldn't match up. So no line symmetry for this one. So I'll just abbreviate SYM for symmetry. Square root or even roots? Does it go through 0, 0? Yeah. You can see that in the graph. If you type in square root 0, it'd pull up 0. Um, but you'll notice that it is restricted on the x. It's only moving to the right. It's not moving to the left at all. So it, x can't be negative. Sorry if you hear any background voices or some people out in the hall being loud. Um, but if you don't hear it, then don't worry about it. <laughs> um, if x can't be negative, guess what? It's going from 0 to infinity, and you include the 0 because it's passing through the origin. So x is in all real numbers, because I'm talking about the domain, such that x is greater than or equal to 0. And then the range, it's only going up. So it's not going down, so I say y can't be negative, or, well, question four is about the y already, so I'll just write can't be negative again. Um, so I'll say the same thing, zero to infinity, and then I'll say y is in all our numbers, because we're talking about the range, such that y is greater than or equal to zero. And is there line symmetry? No, there's not. You can't draw any line and divide that one, so no line symmetry. If it's a cubic or an odd root, it does pass through the origin. You can take the cube root of zero. Um, is it moving left and right freely? Yes, it is. Um, so you see the graph is on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, so it's not restricted on the x. Is it restricted on the y? No, it's moving up and to the right and down to the left, so it's moving up and down on the on the y. So I'm going to say not restricted um, as well. And so if they're both not restricted, then they both have the same answer for the domain and range. Negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation. 
and then in inequality notation, I simply just say the R. Again, um, this one's similar to the cubic or the polynomial odd function. If you drew a diagonal line, it looks like it might reflect, but the, the curves don't match up. Um, so it does not have any line symmetry. Um, the cubic functions exhibit rotational symmetry, where if you turned it, um, I believe 180 degrees, it would be symmetrical, but if, uh, but that's not line symmetry, and I'm just asking about, does it have a line of symmetry? So the rational function, does it go through the origin? There is nothing touching this point right here, so no, it doesn't go through the origin. If you typed in 1 divided by 0, you'd get an error message, so I can't equal 0 um, for x, and if I can't equal 0 for x, then I can't equal 0 for y. So that's going to affect what I write for question 2. Question 2 was, how is the x, um, is the x restricted? Yes, it is. You can't equal 0. In question 4, I'm just going to jump to that while I'm on the same idea. Um, is the y restricted? If you can't plug in 0, then I can't equal 0 because I can divide uh, anything I want, and I can get a really big number if I divide by a really small number, and if I divide by a really big number, I get a really tiny number. That's something that's infinitely small, but it never touches zero. So y can't equal zero either. So for my domain, um, since x can't equal zero, and I need to write that in inequality notation, you see that it is moving left and right freely. It's also moving up and down freely. It's just skipping over that number zero. So in interval notation, we use that union symbol. I say it's going from negative infinity to zero. That's like the boundary. It's like moving from negative infinity to positive infinity, but then it stops before it gets to zero and it curves. So I say negative infinity to zero. I use parentheses on both because you're never touching zero. And then I say from zero to positive infinity. That tells me to skip over the number zero. And in inequality notation, you just say x is in all real numbers such that x can't equal zero. Because you're, you're telling me in the first part that x is all real numbers. And then the second part, you're giving me the condition. And the condition is you just can't plug in zero. So the y, the range, is going to have the same answer. You're going to go from negative infinity to zero in parentheses because you can't touch it. And then you'll put union. You use union when you have a split in your graph and it's going in opposite directions. So I have a split in my graph and it's going in opposite directions. Um, and so you have parentheses on the zero and parentheses on the infinity signs. And then you say y is in all real numbers such that y can equal zero. And then does it have line symmetry? You can't fold it over the y, you can't fold it over the x, but you can fold it over y equals negative x. If you look at it, this diagonal line here, um, and fold it over, it would reproduce the same Im image. So yes, it has line symmetry at f of x, or y equals, but remember we use function notation in algebra g, so f of x equals negative x. Exponential, does it go through 0, 0? No. If you type in e to the 0 power, you're going to get 1. If 0 is your exponent for anything, you're always going to output 1. So you're never going to equal 0. But it means I can plug in 0. I didn't get an error message. Um, so I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. No, it doesn't go through the origin. But yes, it can go through 0 because I can plug in e to the 0 and get an answer. It's just not, an, uh, it's just not 0. So look, it's moving freely left and right. Think of it like that. It's passing right over the y-axis. It's not curving as it approaches the y-axis like this one was. So the, the domain is unrestricted. So I'll put not restricted. And so um, it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it's all real numbers symbol. But the range is restricted. Like I said, if you plug in 0, you get 1. So y is never going to equal 0. And you can look at the graph. You see how it's getting really close to the x-axis? Anywhere on the x-axis is where y equals 0. So y will never be able to equal 0. 
um, and it's also not going below the x-axis, so y can't equal zero or uh, be negative. So your range will be zero in parentheses this time to positive infinity because you're not touching the zero. And so you say y is an all real number is such that y is strictly greater than zero. Again, because you're not touching the zero, you won't underline the symbol, and you won't put zero in a bracket. You'll put it in a parentheses. Does it have line symmetry? No, it doesn't. So no line symmetry. You can't draw any line and mirror that image. The last one, logarithmic. Logarithmic looks just like the exponential graph as if it were turned on its side. That means it's its inverse. So if it's its inverse, um, what's y is now x and what's x is now y. And if that confuses you, just I'll explain as we get there. But it's not passing through the origin. Uh, you see if uh, it's not hitting through 0, 0. Um, but look. Uh, it's not touching the y-axis. If it's not touching the y-axis, then x can't equal 0. So um, that's what I say for this restriction. x can't equal 0. Can x be positive and negative? It's only on the right-hand side, so it can be positive but not negative. So x can't equal 0 um, or be negative. And then we'll go back to what I was saying about inverse. See how I said that for the y? And so my x domain is 0 to infinity. And then I say x is in all real numbers such that x is greater than 0. And my range, can it move up and down freely? Yes, it can. So the range is not restricted. And so you'll notice we wrote not restricted for the x on the other one. So inverse is like opposite. Um, so if it's not restricted, negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers. And then does it exhibit line symmetry? No, it does not, so no line symmetry. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, and until next time, goodbye.